Sanjana. Welcome to Water Think Tank. Uh, Water Think Tank was initiated to create a space to explore and discuss past experiences, current approaches, innovation, and future needs related to the water, water ecosystem in a broad sense of definition. Tonight, we are on the fourth episode of uh, Pitch Perfect, uh, where we initiate conversation on innovative ideas and approaches within water ecosystem that are geared towards human rights, equity, sustainability, green agenda, climate change, and other, other, other relevant topics. So tonight with me is uh, Afan. Afan is the co-founder of uh, UM Water Warriors, a living lab program in University of Malaya, leading action-oriented and translational research to provide sustainable water management solutions to the campus. He also co-founded Inspirasi Kawa, an environmental youth group in Kuala Selangor focusing on river conservation. His areas of expertise are water conservation, uh, especially on the restoration of rivers and lakes, citizen science, environmental education, and sustainable innovation. He's also interested in other fields such as urban biodiversity and waste management. Both he and his wife, founded a university-linked social enterprise called Sikita Kita. So Afan, welcome to Pitch Perfect. Thank you very much, uh, Adrian. Yeah, okay. Th thank <laughs> you for agreeing to, to, to come uh, uh, and, and spend uh, an hour or so with us tonight. And uh, we are keen to know about your efforts. All right, awesome. <laughs> okay, all right. I, I believe you, you have something to show us. Then, then right. why don't we start with some media, get get the thing going, and and you know, and then we kick off the conversation. All right, that's great. Let me just share. All right, is it is it is it there? Yep, it's there, nice and clear. All right, that's great. All right, um, good evening, everyone. So basically, today I'm going to just share my my experience, my journey. Uh, since 2013, um, conducting or hand, uh, be part of a Water Warriors uh, project. So what Shazrin just mentioned just now is uh, uh, what is Water Warriors about. Water Warriors is actually is a campus sustainability living lab programs uh, in University of Malaya. Um, so basically, we are looking into this to um, part which is resource and demand whereas resource is based on cons uh, conservation of water bodies on the, on the campus uh, such as lakes uh, streams uh, longkang or even a pond and also we try to look into the demand parts uh, on reducing water consumption and also increase the efficient use of water usage in the campus so based on usually these two um, people doesn't connected it uh, so we try to integrate it into a, a, into a solutions and we try to implement it in in the campus uh, on the ground and if it's the if the 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 solution is practical or it's been successful would be conducted in the campus we will bring it the solution to the community so um so how it all started so basically during this my during my my study years um my final years at, at that time i was quite active uh in volunteering uh, environmental program so yeah lots of tree plantings uh program i joined I joined a few ngos uh organizing uh environmental educations uh after i graduate after i graduate from my degree uh i straight away do my uh, masters uh, in environmental management and at the same time I work as a research assistant so this is me uh, try to catfish with the uh, local people in Kuala Selangor okay all right <laughs> all right so yeah so after a few years uh, conducting a research uh, doing our doing our a research assistant project so i get my chance to sort of like to go to overseas to present my projects and um my, my projects so this is my first time going to 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 overseas uh, for research 
yeah, it's in Kyoto, Japan. And right. yeah, we are quite lucky at that time and we won uh, the best poster presentation, something like that. And at the time when I went there, I was quite inspired uh, with, I think everyone knows that Japan is very, the, 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 the Japanese are uh, always taking care of the environments, the, the city is clean. So when you were there and you saw yourself, well, it's true what people say. So it, it bring me back a little bit reflection uh, to self reflections. So we we went to the to Japan and we did a project where it's uh, helping a community outside the campus. But how about our, my place? Uh, how about my university itself, where where I spend most of the time uh, at my place? So this yeah. is. Yeah, so this is I, how I actually see the, the, the reflection of the chancellery building. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, you can see that uh this is the varsity lake. It's a lake uh in the middle of the campus, um drying up. And if you notice on the on the right side, it's a car clamp. <laughs> uh so the students throw the car clam into the in, in, into the lake so basically the lake in 2013 is basically this how it was looks like so i'm doing a fantastic work uh we are doing university doing a fantastic work uh, outside uh, helping the community doing all, all the publishing papers um so more not research paper isi everything but nobody is taking care of these issues so somehow yeah i, I want to do something so basically the lakes uh it, the lake in the university is quite polluted with nutrients uh what we call eutrophications uh you can see lots of dead fish blue green algae there's a lot of rubbish so I just decided okay let's do it uh so every evening uh, after i finish my work uh, me and my partner uh sort of like go to the lake um spend uh my own money uh to do sort of like for example uh try to fix the garbage trap that um to stop from uh to stop the rubbish flowing to the to the lake and we also conduct, we buy a kit, a start, uh, monitoring kits. And we try to invite a few friends to sort of like to do cleanups. Activity. So the Water Warriors actually is, is a birth, my birthday present from my partner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she, she, drew the, she drew the logo and we love it. And yeah, that's how the Water Warriors logo is there. I see. I see. So there's a story behind that. But uh, Afan, before you go on, I think just to give a context of, of uh, people that might not be familiar with University of Malaya. University of Malaya is a, a university campus uh, in the heart of, of the in Kuala Lumpur, actually. We are, we are dead in town. And at the center of our campus is, is the, the lake that was uh, showed by Afan just now. So uh, a lot of activities actually revolve around the lake, right? We, we, we do kayaking, we, we, we do all sorts of things. And, and I, 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 I was very amused when, when you showed that the, the, the car clamp was thrown into the lake. <laughs> actually, actually, the car clamp has, has got, a, everyone has got a story behind the car clamp, right? You know, when, when you park illegally, then the, the, the guards will actually clamp your car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the car clamp is really a, a not 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 a very popular popular thing you see on campus. Okay, Afan, go go on. Sorry, I just just thought I'd, I'd yeah it's okay on. yeah it's okay. Um, so from a few friends, uh, we started off with we tried to get more community to be part of this um rehabilitation of the lakes. So yeah, we conduct uh, regular cotton royal sessions. So there's a few communities who who try to save the fish, and we also do some auditing of the trash that we can found inside the lake. So we found just name it that uh, all kind of trash is there uh, from car clam, from washing machine part, uh, washing machine parts. Even a diskette, I think it's from from nineties. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's quite historical, uh, historical trash. So be, 
from from there we we work closely with development unit so what data or what kind of information uh, we get from from on the sites we try to share with development unit so this project actually is quite interesting whereas this i think this is quite the first time whereas uh, development units and lecturers communities working together uh, to solve the lake so this is how the lakes looks now um, there's dark uh, this during the reopening back uh, of the lakes uh, the project took us about 11 months um, it's, it's starting in Jan January 2014 and uh, we reopening the lake back in 2014 uh, in November 2014 so yeah um, so this is the person who who, who actually did the, the, the person who funded the the projects lah um, he's a professor uh, Faisal Rafi uh, at this time he was the deputy vice chancellor of development and currently is he is the vice chancellor of USM University of Science Malaysia so during the reopening he wanted to prove that the lake is clean so he decided to jump into the lake so as a <laughs> as a gimmick yeah <laughs> but he really loved um the late march um he, he involved in the kotoroyong sessions um yeah he's very interesting guy so i i can relate to that actually afan because uh, i i personally know dr faiza rafi and and yeah. when, when, he, when he refers to the to the ducks and goose he always say my ducks yeah <laughs> No, he always say my ducks, you know, you know, my ducks. <laughs> yeah, he, he he even named all the ducks. <laughs> uh, um, and now the lake is not just for recreationals. Uh, it's not just for kayak. It's for it's not for jogging anymore. Um, but we try to add the elements of uh, it, it was uh, the concept of living labs, where students community can can learn. Um what's there uh, around the lakes and the surrounding so this is for example we we always receive international students and even locals uh schools kids to 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 conduct to learn about uh, how to conduct water quality um so so the the student here is currently is doing the stability test so this is the the, the stability tube and yeah from from just Re rehabilitations of the lakes uh, the top management asked us to look into a bigger picture and that's how water warriors grows uh, we are not just lo looking into um, restoration of water bodies uh, that's the reason why uh, my passion there's various passions uh, interests so I'm looking into the ways uh, also um, we are looking into green infrastructures a uh, green blue and blue infrastructures so we try to build a new sort of like the concept of constructed wetland in the campus yeah so this the the project that i'm quite um want to share is a is what we call it place-based citizen science water quality monitoring programs so basically what usually what people do is sort of like environmental educations but um Citizen science program is a little bit high compared to environmental education. Sometimes environmental education can be just one off. Um, so this project we collaborated with uh, Cardiff Universities, um, and is part of uh, Academy Science Malaysia project. Um, we looking into we we did, we conduct citizen science program at two river watersheds, Selangor River watersheds and Klang watersheds. So yeah, and we give the kids to to the to the local communities, to the kids uh, around that those areas. And the one that I want to highlight is the, the, the reporting part. So this is what we sort of like uh, hasilkan. Um, it's a new innovation where usually when people want to talk about water quality class, uh, water quality index, we, we always say class at two, uh, class one, class two, class three, class four. But some, the, 
for for community to understand is quite hard but we try to visualize it so we we produce a eco heart index so basically we have all we have six about six parameters so each parameters we sort of like uh, when they plot the graph if the water is clean uh, it will show a heart shape and if the water is polluted uh is we're going to show it's like broken heart oh, wow. so, it's, so it's much easier for uh, for the local communities or communities to understand uh what's happening uh to to, to the water quality so yeah that's it <laughs> Okay, so thank you for sharing. I think there, there are a lot of nice pictures there and, and I, I can relate be, being from, from University of Malaya myself. I, I actually joined uh, in, in, in 2000, so that's like 21 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> back, back at the time, it, it, it was actually not one way, you know. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, okay, let, let, let's uh, go back a little bit about uh, what Water Warriors is, and and uh, you, you're calling it a, a social enterprise. So may, maybe uh, you know, uh, I, I'm sure people will be wondering, uh, what does a social enterprise mean actually? I mean, what does it entail? All right, okay. So that's okay. The typical uh, business making usually we are referring into the the end product is the profit. So that's the money is the profit. So that's the way how conventional business uh, kind of ways looking into. But social enterprise is it's not the the impact is not just on the profit the money sides, but also how it can contribute to the society to the environments. Uh, we are looking into a different kind of impact. So I think that's uh, what we are trying to do. Uh, it's not just making money uh, or profit but also what kind of impact you can create oh yeah so that's it so what the warriors actually is a, is a living lab program under university itself and we every year we need to sort of like apply grants um if there's grant adalah so if there's the university decided to slash the grant uh, so the water warriors cannot be functioning, especially to in hiring me um, and my partner. So, <laughs> what, so what we we uh, start collective we we decided to sort of like, okay, how about we try to form a university linked social enterprise? So we form a small company called Sekita Kita, uh, so that we can branch out more, um, so that we don't have to financially dependable on the university itself so that's the reason why we establish a uh, sekita kita as a social enterprise so the, the uh, it's actually not easy uh institutionalizing something even though you have a, a good cause and and uh, you know a target that that is beneficial for all okay so i think i think uh, what you, you've done a great job and uh, uh i'm 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 very surprised and and I'm at awe when I see the pictures that you showed just now, you know, the, the amount of people involved and particularly the youth. So this is the key word of today's title, can you? How, 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 how do you, uh, can, can we use the word trick? How, how do you trick <laughs> the youth to, to, to getting involved into cleaning rivers and, you know, getting their, their, their feet dirty in the mud and things like that, you know, and, and you know, uh, because we're under the impression that the you know, they, they, they'd rather be at home watching Netflix or something. So, so they have <laughs> the attraction there. Mm, all right. That's very interesting. Uh, it can be tricky also. But what my my idea is, this is one tagline that I always use, inspire, be inspired. Um, so you just do it. Um, maybe just... Maybe today there's there's some youth uh, watching this uh, shows uh, session. He, he or she inspired to do something today, and she or she should just do it. So sometimes we can just do. I think the, the ripple effects lah. Uh, so basically, when we talk about 
uh, when we do conduct activities, the numbers is not, the turnout is not big. Uh, so we feel defo- de- de- motivated. But I think that's not how we look into it. So sometimes a few person actually can create a lot of impacts. A lot of, uh, you can shake a lot of trees. Uh, so I think so that's... Your, your, you, you, your attraction, the honey is the inspiration. Nah. You, you, yes. you go out and, and, and set to inspire people. To the, and I think it's quite successful, uh, particularly because uh, the results. I think people are a lot of, a lot people are driven by the results that they see and and if if i i i'm a first eyewitness of, of uh, what you have done to the lake and i think a lot of people are inspired by that so your 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 strategy works lah. so we have, a question, we have a question a related question by punita uh what, what are the activities that that water warriors actually focus on so um we are focusing on um place-based citizen science programs and also environmental education. So at the last slide just now, uh, you saw that there's uh, a bus and a, a bungalow house. That's actually is our office. So our office is uh, part of environmental education. So so that's one of the activities that we conducted uh, for Water Wars. And Water Wars is not just conducting activities, we also do consultations uh, for, for, for development units and also we always key partners for, for the stakeholders uh, such as uh, ministries um, to, to be involved in uh, stakeholder meetings, something like that. So it, it grows a lot of nowhere. We, we never thought that Water Warriors can grow this big actually. <laughs> At, at the beginning of Water Warriors, we always thought, okay, let's just do Kotoroyom, clean up the lakes, uh, make the place clean. And somehow it ended up, yeah, we, we never thought that it's going to be something like this, this big and create a huge impact to the community and also to the, to the campus itself. I think inspiration doesn't just come like that, you know. It, it must be something that you have because Normally, when, when, when you initiate something that is related to the environment or something like that, the first thing that comes to mind is Gotong Royong, Gotong Royong, and, and it never gets past that, you know. But I think what you have, you have done, like you say, you, even you yourself is always constantly surprised by, by, by how Water Warrior has grown, kan? So, it, it must be something there, I think. Yeah, I think, um, so basically, I'm the person who, who loves to do the dirty job. So, but and my partner is my partner is more on creative side, so so she she knows how to shape the water warriors. Um, she knows how to. I think one of the reason um how we get more people's uh to to sort of like to join the the reviving the Tasik universities, she she actually spent almost a month at the archive. UM to sort of like to look into the history of Tasik Varsity. Nobody, um, nobody have doing that uh, before. Um, usually when we talk about history in UM, we always talk about the the one thank you, Chesler, the, 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 the DTC, the Panggung experiments. So, but the Tasik itself, the Tasik Varsity itself, there's, there's a lot of history. So the, the community in the, in the past, was really close to the Tasik varsities and how the transitions of the lake, the, the shape of the lakes, the topography of the lakes change uh, until now. It's quite surprising and we have the video on YouTube. Uh, so if people want to watch it. I think this, the size has, has halved, right, in, in, in over the years. It, it's, yes. It's, 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 yeah. 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 There's a lot of changes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So so uh, yeah. Do do check out the video uh, that Afan is referring to. And uh, you mentioned the word citizen science. I think I think it would be interesting to explain to the viewers what what that actually means. Citizen science. All right. Okay. So citizen science actually is um, maybe it's new concept to Malaysian. Uh, but actually, when we do, when people talk about science or doing research. We always assume a scientist 
a person who 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 is working in in the lab or who working in institutions or in universities but actually um for citizen science anyone uh tak kira lah uh, how old are you uh, ke- uh muda tua or even you don't have a background in science or in the particular subjects but you can still contribute to science or contribute to data or sort of like to design a project a bit science based projects so this is what we are trying to do um so the community itself when we when we want to solve a a, a problem uh within the community so the community itself is so much better compared compared to us which is we are the outsiders so we can, and the community can help us to sort of like monitor uh to collect data what kind of data because they they st- they live there they know about the place so this is the, we are trying to bring the, the gap between researchers and also citizen science uh, citizen citizen scientists to work together so there's a lots of um i think that lots of projects uh, upcoming and even academy science malaysia are also trying to do uh, there's there's a section uh, called open science open science and they are trying to bring citizen science uh, projects uh, in in malaysia context okay we we have a we have a relevant and and very similar apa tu related question how uh, from anita Uh, they get to, how how do i get my young 6 and 5 year old to get interested in sustainability and green behavior so this is citizen science huh? ah, all right <laughs> um so how do you get your child actually you so based on this is my experience I, i i am a father i have my uh, i have a daughter four years old <laughs> so based on my experience actually is to bring your kids um outdoor or to involve them in in in, in sustainability or green uh, behaviors because i i realized that when you doing something your kid will follow uh when you recycle at home uh, or yeah and your your kid will ask why why they this uh, putting the trash over here not uh, throwing outside so that's how my my daughter learned and yeah you don't have to, i'm also try to bring my uh my daughter to 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 the parks uh, to get her her dirty so so <laughs> so she get sort of like much closer to to nature something like that so it's it's basically it start from at house so so i i see two things there actually afan one is uh, inspiration which you which you have kept very consistent And uh, another one is uh, apa tu? The, the citizen side. You 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 are not afraid to get your 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 children dirty. I think I think this is where some of the more modern parents can they, they, <laughs> the approach is a little bit different. You know, everything has to be hygienic and and things like that. So the the they they don't get a chance to actually uh, get involved in in you know get, getting the things get, getting themselves dirty. You know, and then. Actually, it's not that dirty, pun kan? <laughs> get, get, you know, playing in the rain, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. get, getting into the mud and things like that. All right. So yeah, a follow up from uh, Anita. Now we said that uh, kindies do tour to chocolate factories and gardenia. Will be good if they can organize a tour, uh, uh, you know, a tour relating to to water. So maybe does does Water Warrior receive children or not for for? Yeah. Yeah. Um. Jap, Shazri, I I need to plug my charger so so before. Alright, alright. Alright, I'm back. Sorry, sorry. No, it's, uh, it's alright. It's alright. I mean, we're live, so these these things happen. <laughs> so, um, so um, yeah, we we conduct activities for kids. Um, because the lake itself is quite far. It's not big enough, but there's a lots of things to learn. Um. Uh, we always thought that when we want to learn sort of like uh we want to emerge with nature we have to go to hutan 
we have to go to sungai air terjun everything but actually we live around nature um even your 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 backyard can can have lots of biodiversity uh the wildflower uh near the pathway if you just take a moment and just look closely you can see a lots of butterfly that that come uh, came to come to the to the flowers um to find foods so there's a there's a stereotypes that oh to 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 be part of nature to enjoy nature you need to go to something that pristine no um but i think that there's a misconception uh, conception on that so even urban nature itself even a concrete channelized river there's there's a lots of thing that you can see so me- memang orang kata when we talk about channelized river oh this is a big drain when we yeah, are when when we start the project <laughs> in the campus itself when we talk to the to the community even to the lecturers we have a, a, a river in the campus uh, sungai pantai and sungai ada batu what they, they didn't believe <laughs> they thought as oh no it's a, it's a longkang no it's a river <laughs> <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so that's how conservations uh conservation uh conservation uh, conversation start so you just need to sort of like talk to people to get them oh okay lah jom lah turun sungai uh ni uh look what what we have here so when people go down to the to the channelized river in the campus for example oh bersihnya air ni there's a lots of fish so people are more appreciate compared to just look from up and just based on their assumptions so yeah you know uh i i used to 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 walk around campus and and when when i cross over the lake either behind uh perdana siswa or, or even near the mosque i i always look down and i <laughs> i'm always happy to see the fish you know to see the fish swimming the water is quite clear yeah. and and yeah i i I think I have uh, a yeah, water warriors to, to thank for it, lah. I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, it's quite interesting. I think that's how water people always uh, look like. Or every time I do sungai or longkang, we we will try to take a look. <laughs> that's the habit. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so, so, what what's going on there? Right? Are, are they pollution, plastic? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think the environment itself is 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 something that is uh, I don't know if it's the right term to use addictive kind. I mean, we we have a sense of of uh, care and responsibility to 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 take care lah. It's it's not greenwashing on our side lah. I suppose. Yeah, yeah. We, we 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 are really passionate about it, right? Yeah. Uh, I just yeah. want to add on on Anita yeah. just now um on relating towards uh, regarding to water. I think uh this might as this is what I saw in Japan. Actually, even us, I think kindergartens uh, and primary students, the, the the school kids actually been to the wastewater treatment center. So the severe uh, STP. So I think in Malaysia, we sh- yeah they, they they even visited uh where's the in the uh, the the severe treatment centers in Japan. For the kids to learn, uh, to expose themselves uh, with, with with that kind of tours. I think is 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 the approach and and the how, how people frame things out. So when 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 the education system changes, I think I think it's a bit different in Japan. They they look at more, uh, they they're more open and diverse when they look at things. And uh, you know, uh, we. I, this is my personal, uh, probably a personal uh, opinion. I think a lot of the syllabus uh, at the younger age, especially, is is too much focused on on uh, academic, and and they, they don't have the the hard thing, you know, <laughs> to environment, to sustainability, and things like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, I could. I'm not. Sh- I couldn't agree more lah. Uh, I, I this depends on I think we always start that sometimes uh the the subject is not not enough. We we try to implement the environmental education in the school subjects. Um, yeah, but it's it's go back to I think 
one of the reason for example the cinta isungai uh, the campaign of cinta isungai i think it's been started in 90s or 80s um so is there any difference um i think that's not, not much difference um i think because it's is going back to where uh the school the children actually learn a few hours at schools contoh cikgu ajar dekat sekolah everything but at home they spend most of the time with their parents their siblings if their parents and their siblings does not take care of their environment such as just littering everywhere uh, do not re- uh, practice recycling or any green move uh, green initiative the children will will just stop there so dia dia, dia punya kitaran tu tak tak akan sampai ke sekolah because the 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 time of the children at the schools and the children with their parents is much more longer so they they observe that so macam contohnya hari tu masa lepas MCO there's a lots of trash uh, near the river are we blaming the teacher no <laughs> so are we we supposed to look why why the adults uh why is the parents uh not not being responsible so yeah is is going back to the sort of like to, we as an adult we we need to change it's not just uh the kid itself we cannot put the pressure i think because the kids we sort of like try to copy what you are doing yeah yeah i think i think a lot of it is is it already ingrained in, into the, the the culture and in the perception you know when when i i don't I, i i personally feel that people are not intentionally bad so when 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 they are actually leaving uh, rubbish or you know after a picnic when they actually leaving things behind they they have the perception that someone will come and clean it i i don't think that people are, are intentionally wanting to to be dirty or to pollute It's just that they they don't know otherwise, you know. So <laughs> I guess this is this is this is my feeling. Anyway, for all the viewers uh, that that may have uh, just joined us, uh, we are on Pitch Perfect, and today we have Afan from UM Water Warriors. <laughs> okay, so there's a there's a comment from a Facebook uh, user. Uh, do you think the youth in our country are well aware and understand their role in sustainable development? sustainable development uh, is good right <laughs> okay. yeah okay. yeah um maybe i can just quote there's there's a risk there's a research conducted by unicef uh, yeah i think in unicef so nine out of ten actually youth uh if i'm not mistaken uh nine out of ten youth are, are, are aware about uh climate change uh sustainable sustainable development so but aware and practice is quite different <laughs> you yeah <laughs> you can yeah people are aware that throwing rubbish is bad but in practice no <laughs> so aware yeah is is quite different um and i think um youth the current youth um my 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 generation actually is they are quite keen about the environment so if you are if you can see the protests the the demonstration about about climate change i think lots of youth lead um yeah you can see the the, the transitions on, on on that part I think this is where we need to 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 bridge the gap, you know, because like like you say, uh, they they want to be involved. They they acknowledge uh, climate change and and they they want to do better, but probably they don't know how because uh, sustainability, climate change, and all that is is get, gaining so much popular popularity now. It's the in thing, right? BTS and Blackpink is there, you know. <laughs> So yeah, I mean they have no choice but but you know to acknowledge that this is the in thing right now. But probably the 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 support system is not there to 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 show them what to do and and where to be involved, how to contribute. So I think this is where uh, 
organizations like Water Warrior, Sekita Kita, you know, provides a platform for them to to get involved and and you know, other other ones, I I think they they do they do not know where they can contribute. What what do you think? Yeah, yeah, I I think that's very uh relevant uh situations where most people doesn't know where to start. Uh, my suggestion is start at home first or start with your with your neighborhoods. Uh, small steps. You don't have to think big. Uh, you don't have to. Oh, we need to save all river in Malaysia. What you can do is just look at your drain or your neighborhood drains, your longkang. What's there? What I can help? What I can contribute? Just look. I think that's how you start your journey. Uh, and then if you are malu or uh, shy, I think or Malaysian are quite shy persons. Try to invite your friends, your family to 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 join. I remember um, I'm I'm quite lucky that my partner and my friend are quite mukatabal lah. <laughs> we 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 don't mind whatever what people want to say. Uh, we we receive a lots of uh, up, buat kerja apa ni kerja bodoh kerja gila kutip sampah kat sungai. <laughs> <laughs> we just do that thing. Just do it. <laughs> But somehow, in in the end, the person that criticized us, oh, finally decide to join us. So okay, that's that's good. <laughs> <laughs> so so keep it up, keep it up. Ah, that's why this is the yeah. word. Keep it up. Ah, uh, that there's there's uh, probably a follow up kind of uh comment there. So sir, are are you happy with the slow changes, or are you getting frustrated that the changes are not fast enough? Yeah. <laughs> so when 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 I start the when I start involved in this kind of water related um, in work, my first thought is, Kenapa, why, why nobody taking care of this? Why, why nobody's doing this? Uh, is it too hard? But when I involve and I understand the system, I involve, uh, I try to connect with the, with the person. So, who who in charge with that kind of uh, problem so there's a lots of obstacles that you need to understand also it's not like skeleton matter the change changes is not just just snap everything is changed uh, it takes times um yeah it, it it can be frustrated um but i re i still remember um the idea that i i, I try to push uh, in the campus itself Whereas I think this is typical Malaysian punya system, uh, wastewater system, whereas uh, all the cafes, uh, all the wastewater is, will go directly to the longkang after the oil and grease trap. Uh, I was telling to the, uh, to the development units and also to the director, we need to change these systems uh, after oil and grease trap, the wastewater from the cafe need to connect to the severe system so that it being treated carefully so that our river doesn't uh, pollute is it takes about four to five years so to to them to realize that oh okay we uh, we want to do this so don't don't give up uh just try pushing them get them annoyed also <laughs> sometimes <laughs> show 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 them proof uh, show them data so that's that's how citizen science, citizen science can work we ask community to sort of like snap a pictures of your long kang or a pollution in in the campus and then we share in our social media so that people knows what's happening so yeah um i think that's it's not just about changes i think I think this is what um, personal uh, experience. Malaysia, in your context, juga, uh, we always have this pepatah Melayu lah say that makan garam, du makan, makan garam banyak. So the old people or the person who have experience uh, always correct lah. <laughs> so the idea for the youth to sort of like maybe the idea of the the idea from the youth is quite unconventional something new is hard for them to accept or even for youth um, if you are for example i have the same i i'm trying to solve a solution i give a solution 
uh, nah, 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 uh, this is it. The development unit or somehow the, the person in higher levels doesn't want to listen to your idea. But if a person with a title uh, or, or a doctor or professor or a purple or with experience give you the same suggestion, exactly people will straight away uh, listen to you. So it's quite frustrating. So a lot of people ask me, Afan, why don't you do your, your PhD? So that people are more <laughs> going to listen to you. So no, I, I'm not going to do my PhD. So I just, yeah. So it takes time uh, for people to trust you. Um, so especially to bring a new ideas uh, in place. Yeah, I, I can yeah. relate to that. So maybe just a little bit of a follow up to your statement. Uh, can, can you tell us a little bit more about the support you're getting from uh, from the organization, from your main organization or other organizations around you? So um, in my team itself, uh, we have very, uh, we have, so to, to establish a living lab, usually we, uh, lecturers need to be part of uh, the project itself. But how Water Warriors works, actually, the lecturers uh, is uh, is advising us. Uh, anything that we conducted uh, is based on me and my partner. So how how we want to design Water Warriors, how, how what kind of project that we want to do is based on us. And we have various um, multidisciplinary uh, teams. Lah. Uh, we have from Faculty of Science, we have uh, lecturers from Chemical Engineering, uh, from Build Environments. Uh, now we have from um, the IT and technologies to be part of Water Warriors because to solve any problem, you, you, it's, it doesn't take one discipline. It takes um, various collaboration of multidisciplinary to, to, to get inputs to have a holistic approach and a holistic uh, solutions juga lah. So I'm quite lucky. Um, they are they are very open. Um, they're very, doesn't straight for us to to explore ourselves lah. So sometimes other lecturers uh, quite want to control their RAs or the project officer. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think you, you know better that. Uh, <laughs> Probably so, not, but yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's how we works, and we are quite lucky that we get a lots of um supportive approach from from the universities. Uh, even um, yeah, we never realized that even ministries, uh, even research institute came to us to be. Uh, to involve in their projects or to be part of the stakeholders. Yep. So, so the, the traction is there, like you're getting support, not, not only in terms of expertise, but other resources as well. So I think that, that, that's quite a, 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 an accomplishment, I would say. So yeah, bravo. <laughs> okay, but uh, I, I, I don't want to let this go. The, uh, amongst the achievements, maybe let, let's talk about some of the achievements. You, you were recently featured in, in uh, a magazine, 40 Under 40 of, of Prestige. <laughs> a little bit more about that. So, um, yeah, basically we, we never realized that uh, suddenly I, I received uh, a DM on Instagram that Prestige Malaysia, uh, Prestige Malaysia is a, is a magazine. Um, they they are doing a short uh, they are doing a call 40 under 40 so 40 person for this year they are sort of like the 40 person who involved in innovative and influence young people's on environment so we were quite lucky we didn't we never know tiba tiba eh okay uh, we never apply or anything <laughs> so my partner and i got into that uh, 40 under 40 lah so people are taking notice of your efforts yeah 
So how, how does it feel? How how does it feel to have your your picture in 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 a, in a magazine? I mean, Prestige magazine is quite an established magazine. Yeah. So, uh, uh, to be honest, actually, uh, there's always a person or a group of person who 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 did more compared to us. Uh, we are quite lucky again to be chosen uh, on under forty on uh, forty under forty. So. Yeah, actually, there's there's a lots of my friends who who make lots of more changes. Um, I we are quite happy. <laughs> so I I'm quite speechless on this one. Uh, we never expect it. So yeah, <laughs> because there's there's a lots of youth uh who doing lots more changes to compare to us. Sikit uh, yeah, what we are doing is for us is just sikit. Think there's a lot more out there. Yeah, it, I, I I don't think it's secret at all. Uh, I I need to be uh, in the fifty or under fifty. If if, if it were me lah, <laughs> fifty under fifty. Okay, Afan, I I, I want to catch you on another thing. You know, you 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 are using the word partner. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? <laughs> actually, my partner is actually is my wife. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> So, so this, is, this is the byproduct of, of Water Warriors. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when we when we start doing the revival project, um, we we met during our volunteer times lah. Um, during my final year project, and we never know that we fall in love together with the lake and also each other. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Beside the lake, I like that. <laughs> So 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 it, maybe there's a, a, a legend lah, a urban legend lah. So the the lake has uh, contributed to 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 many apa uh, two unions. <laughs> yeah, actually when when we collect the history of the Tasik Bar City, um, there's a lots of people actually um meet their partners uh at the lake. So it's quite yeah. Who who anyone who want to cherry jodo you can go to the lake for city lake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've never heard that one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, but but I think I think we can relate lah. I also met my wife in 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 UM, not beside the lake, but yeah. <laughs> oh, in, inside UM. Uh, all right. Uh, I I'd like to to um. You you spoke about the uh, Eco Heart Index. Maybe, maybe can, can we have a little bit more information about that? Ah, all right. So when the Eco Heart Index come, so it's it's a project. When I work as a research assistant that time, ah, uh, actually we are working together. There's a a program called Asian Core Program with Malaysian universities, um, collaborating with Japan universities. So at that time, uh, each university in Malaysia, for example, uh, UM itself, uh, adopting Sungai Selangor as their rivers, uh, UKM University Kemas in Malaysia is taking care of uh, doing research on Sungai Langat, and UMT University of Technology Malaysia is uh, doing on Sungai Johor. So the research begin. Uh, my research at that time was. To to search the local uh local values, or uh, for on the communities in Sungai Selangor, particularly uh, particularly in the Firefly area, which is in the Mukim Pasangan areas, which is located downstream of Sungai Selangor. So these places are quite famous with uh, firefly tourism. So. We we doing the research. We collect. We interview the local communities. Um. Uh. And then we, uh, we publish paper everything. And then one of our friends from NGO asked us, "What's next?" So this is typical uh university uh research lah. We we go to the community. We take. They are, they are, they are uh, taking their answers, their result, and we leave the community behind. So, my our friends ask us, "What's next? You cannot just leave the communities like this. You need to do something like that. Uh, something." So we we sort of like 
brainstorm and we extend our research into a translational research. So this translational research based on the previous research, we, we based on the previous research, we try to translate what kind of activity that can we conduct with the communities. So one of the um one of I didn't, all right one of the the product that we produce actually is a, a is a coffee table book is a community it's a, a stories about uh from a research paper we produce a stories a book stories about the communities relating to the river and second project is about um uh, connecting most community and the rivers and the last and not least is we established a youth lead uh, environmental group called inspiracy kawa so so that's uh our translation research so when we do the translation research we also looks into the we got inspired in japan juga um they have this community citizen science projects whereas their graph is uh their graph shape is star so basically if the water quality so the graph will shape the star lah so kalau cantik dia akan star cantik lah and our project at that time is what we call hardware h-e-h-e-a-r-t-w-a-r-t-r-d r-e so it's hardware so it's about inner in the emotion something like that so we try to okay we are working with uh, our partners uh, in japan how how to con how to communicate with the community we, we, we realize that when we talk about class one class two class three community tak faham. but when people talk visualize especially heart hati people are more com people are more connected so we they, they they can saw that oh sungai hari eh, sungai kita hari ni uh, cantik hati dia uh, it's very full heart so ataupun uh, oh hari ni uh, kali ni water quality uh, tak cantik lah it's broken heart apa what's wrong so it's not just a visualizations and also we we can based on the graph itself we can tengok what kind of parameter actually is contributing to to broken height too. so okay. that, and yeah and the the parameters are, are, are quite you can just change uh the parameter is not fixed um and when we, when we show it to people uh people are loving it because they, they understand more on what's the what quality is all about yeah so th this is the, the translational research that you were talking about where uh you know when, when you're working with the community you are, you're giving them something visual something that can relate to and i think i think it's 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 what a, a lot of research now uh previously was lacking and now now we see the the transition where the stakeholders are actually uh, not just being engaged but be getting to be involved into the research itself okay? so yeah uh, the, the appreciation is more like, you see, we, we've got a, a comment there. So people are interested in your coffee table book. <laughs> so, so, yeah. how, how <laughs> so you can just message us on uh, Facebook page, Water Warriors. Uh, so I, from there, I, I can connect with you. Lah. Okay, the you. address is at UM Water Warriors, right? Yeah, Water Warriors UM. Yeah. Water Warriors UM, so I got it the other way around. All right. <laughs> so, Arfan. <laughs> Uh, it, it's so easy to talk to you. It's it's 59 minutes into the conversation already. I, I don't think we want to keep the audience a little uh, too too long. <laughs> that, that <laughs> but uh, I, I don't want to uh, end it without knowing where do you uh, envision Water Warriors, uh, and, and your, your, your little babies. Where, where do you uh, envision it going going forward into the future? Ah, okay, that is very hard question <laughs> because I'm not the person with plan. <laughs> to be honest, that's that's my to be honest, that's not my strong criteria. <laughs> uh, I, what most probably what we are aim, uh, even though me and my partner is if no longer working in Water Warriors, 
we hope that the spirits uh, or the, our efforts are uh, being continued uh, in the campus and also it's not just in, not just in the campus itself uh, we hope that we can inspire others uh, communities uh, institutional uh, yeah schools and yeah and for sekita kita actually is it is is a it's a small company lah uh, we are trying to establish um, where we work closely with community nearby so sort of like to explore what's sekitar kita yeah <laughs> all right all right that, that that's a really good ending <laughs> so, I, i don't know you you scripted it <laughs> no <laughs> well, what, what about what about inspirasi kawa yeah all right so for inspirasi kawa um it used to be um me and my partner leading the the group but uh, a few years ago we decided to to let it go for for community to take over so we actually we have the local champions uh there uh, in, uh abang edi lah so abang edi is taking care of the kids uh who to bring uh the kids to the rivers to do cleanups activities to do uh to bring tourists everything so yeah is very sustaining uh model lah uh, for inspiracy kawa okay so thank you very much i i i i i can't express how much i enjoyed having you on the show and you know uh you you're so easy to to converse with and i think we've we've covered quite a lot of grounds and uh Uh, you know, we we talk about the lake, something that uh, is close to my heart as well, being a, an alumni of UM. Uh, <laughs> right. Uh, maybe uh, a, a few words uh, to, to to conclude the show for the audience. All right. Okay. Um, don't afraid to be to start things. Um, just start small. Um, just. Buat muka tebal, <laughs> tutup telinga. <laughs> If you believe in the cause, um, yeah, just do it. You don't have to listen what other people are saying or thinking about you. So, okay. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah I, I, I think it's your smile also, Afan. It's, it's very addictive. <laughs> okay, so, so thank you, Afan. Thank you, Afan. Uh, congratulations to you and your partner. And, and loving wife for uh, getting the recognition. I think it's it's really due and and well deserved. And to the viewers outside, uh, thank you for joining us tonight. And uh, stay safe. Good night. All right. Thank you.